Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In the video today we're going to be looking at the classic CinemaWay game called Wings on the Amiga. Now this was released in mid to late 1990 for those of us who can remember that far back and CinemaWare, anything by CinemaWare really was a spectacular event in itself but Wings was when CinemaWare were probably at their pinnacle. It's a World War One action game with a little bit of flight simulator thrown in for good measure. But it is, it's a simple game, nice and easy. Aim, shoot and destroy the enemy. What can be easier than that? Having said that, it's far more difficult than you can imagine. The game itself is written with a full narrative style. In fact, it's written with a diary, so you can keep track of what the pilot's thinking, what their emotions are, and the missions that they're flying on. So it's all very thought-provoking as you play the game. Couple that with rollicking good music, fantastic graphics, and the rat-a-tat-tat -tat of machine gun fire, and you have an action-packed game worthy of a 1920s, 1930s, or even a 1940s film. It is superb and simply one of the best games that CinemaWare ever created. It was published, as I said, in late 1990. It was designed by John Cutter. The artist was Jeffrey Hilbers. Uh, the music was by Greg Haggard and it's described as a shoot -em up simulator with action. Um, it's a top-down isometric and a 3D game as well. Now, if you haven't played this game, you really, you really must have this in your collection if you're an Amiga user. I haven't personally played the ST version, so I can't comment, but it is one of the best out there, uh, and it really is a must-play for an Amiga owner. Now I'm going to ask uh, my friend John, I'm going to have a little bit of a chat and talk about Wings and our memories of Wings. So I'm over to John. This is going to be a new feature that I hope uh, John and I and maybe some other people can join in and we can have a little conversation. So it's just not my perspective on games and the nostalgic era that I like to talk about. Anyway, without further ado, here's John. So John, we were going to talk about Wings. Well, we are going to talk about Wings, yeah. What draw you? What drew you to Wings, and when? Wings is um, it's funny, because when you think about the Amiga games back in the day, um, they were good. In cinema we were particularly good, as we all know, with Defender of the Crown and stuff. Um, but when Wings came out, I think it was something about the tone, just the overall kind of gameplay of the thing. It was just you've got this overarching sort of style, you know, overarching diarised kind of yeah, um, yeah. playability of the game, you know, where you, you, you play through um, the eyes of whichever particular guy that you have at that time and you haven't killed yet in a dogfight. Mm. Um, but it's all diarised, you know, so everything um, day yeah. on day is a, a different um, story in the diary and, and the stories in the diary were very real, you know. It's, it's incredibly atmospheric, isn't it? It was, and you know, kind of wee French um, cafe music that we kind of play, and yeah, yeah. Kind of accordion sort of sounds and stuff. Yeah. It kind of just dropped you into the game, and you kind of felt like you were part of it. And if you had, if you'd managed to keep one of your pilots um, for any length of time in one of the campaigns, you actually felt a sense of loss if you managed to crash his <laughs> player into <laughs> the ground or get taken out. Or... It was, it was very good. I mean, to think this is a, a late 1990 game, I think it was. Oh, early um, 1990. I, I mean, it's, it's a long, long time ago, and to capture the atmosphere and um, the whole ambience of the, not only that, I mean, it's it loosely, you could argue it's loosely based on the film Wings. Um, I suppose. But, you know, it's just a, a, a rollicking good story, isn't it? An it's adventure. a cracking story. And it's uh, it's superb. It's so well done. It's fantastic. I mean, I love Wings. It's one of my one of my favourite cinema wares. Not the most favourite, admittedly, but it's right up there. And it's fantastic. And it ran even on the humble A five hundred. It ran pretty well, as I remember. It ran really well. It was very smooth, you yeah. know. Um, and again, that's, that's something that you would see in a cinema wear game is just how smooth the game would run. Same as Defender of the Crown and stuff, and yeah. just how pretty it would look. And there's all these hand-drawn sort of characters and backdrops and stuff. I think it just kind of made it um, a bit more special than what was kind of going about at the time. Mm. Who was the graphic artist? But was it done in-house? Can you remember? Mm, don't know actually. Um, I've got the 
I've actually. So I've got got the original. Yeah. So that's the, the original wings. Well, so that's the Amiga, Amiga release, is it? Sorry? Is that the Amiga release? Yeah, Amiga. Better soft. So you get a couple of discs. Um, you got your an aviator's briefing manual for the First World War. Super. It's part of the it's part of the um stuff in the box. I'm envious by that because my particular copy of Wings came from a car boot sale for the princely sum of two pounds, as I remember. <laughs> so I never had the, the manual or the box or anything. It says the graphic artist was Jeff Helbers. Ah, okay. Don't recognise. No, I don't recognise him. Don't recognise anybody in this list at all. Game design, John Cutter. No, I don't recognise anybody. <laughs> here's here's your um, instruction on aerial combat flying. That was so hard to master. <laughs> the amount of times I got killed trying to fly that blooming plane. <laughs> There's an absolute knack to it. There was a knack to it. There was what was it made it of three parts? I can't remember now. The the, the flying bit, the strafing, and the balloon run or something was it? So that was that was also part of the flying bit. So you would um you would have the um. You'd you'd have a dogfight, but there'd be missions to take out balloons and stuff like that as well. You know, oh, so they would right, separate. Okay. Uh, and occasionally, if you weren't flying very very well, you'd kill yourself by flying into a balloon that you just destroyed. Yeah, I remember that. Um, not the best way to go. Um, <laughs> you'd be taken out by one of the the enemies. Um, then you had, as you said, the strafing, where you'd you'd have a target of um, I don't know, take out the land troops or take out specific buildings or whatever. Mm. Um, while avoiding the Red Cross kind and of thing. And these were all different views as well. You had the 3D of the aircraft, didn't you? And the yeah. strafing run, was that top down? It was top down, but isometric. of a kind of jaunty angle. It was kind of That's right, yeah. isometric kind of idea, um, yeah. sort of di- running diagonally up the screen. Um, and then you had the bombing runs. So you'd be, that was probably oh, top right. down. That's right, yeah, um, I remember. So you'd, you'd have to... Did you have a shadow engage. for the, the, the bomb? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. And that, also that very difficult, difficult as I remember it was they brought out the remastered version which is that guy have you tried um, it? yeah um, it's, it's pretty good um, to be honest though I prefer the Amiga version yeah. so, oh, they've kept all the gameplay very accurate um, in, the, in the re-release and the remake and whatnot. and they give you lots of nice goodies in the nice big box and stuff that's number 7 of 250 this one um so you get all that kind of good stuff, but um, I just felt that the gameplay is as as good, but it feels nicer on Amiga because it is all kind of hand drawn, and it's whereas mm. the the new version is all kind of three D and um, oh, so very they re- CGI. They've remastered the graphics, have they? Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I kind of prefer the old. It's a little bit like when Broken Sword Five came out. Um, they, they did the return to the uh, Broken Sword One and Two. Um, type games it was all kind of hand drawn stuff and and get moved away from the whole kind of cool 3D um and back to back to grassroots which is I think I like that and I see that more and more in in retro games these days where they're they're maintaining the pixel aspect of things you know um, that's where that's where the nostalgia is isn't it I think very much very much you see people like Simon Butler doing graphics and whatnot it's just it's still it it's it would be the top of the range graphics back in the day if, yes. if uh, that was still if you were yeah. able to do it. It's just, but I prefer I prefer that. Talking about the graphics and the music at the the French cafe, do you remember the funeral scene? Oh, how brilliant was that! That was fantastic. Was sad and brilliant. I forgot about that. Eco, eco <laughs> measures, <laughs> kind, of, kind of trotting up the hill, um, and it's all kind of dark reds and stuff like that in the background. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've only just remembered about it. I've not played Wings for um, a few years now, but I used to play it constantly back in the day. I used to love it. Me and my brother used to play it. And, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. It was great. Good game. Very good. Can I catch your hooks? If you like reading, um, it, Wings would keep your hooks just basically in the narrative of the story that evolved every day. Yes. You know, um, having to get up at the crack of dawn and, um, you know, when they were they were, they were shooting at... Um, they were, they were shooting at uh, Snowmen that were dressed up as Nazis. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's so oh, yeah. fun, you know, to pass pass the day because they couldn't fly. Yeah. And you, you really did just get you get immersed in it, the whole narrative of it. 
Wings was fantastic. The music, the score, the the score of it, the setting, the atmosphere, and like you said, the diary entries and all the rest of it was absolutely first class. And just showed what the Amiga could do back in the day. It was it was so well done. Uh, and that's on what two floppies? Yeah, two floppies. Yeah, yep. fantastic. Was there is there much change in between? Them, can you remember? I don't think there was. I don't remember being overly um, having to having to swap the discs. No, I don't remember it being too much. Because no. I play it these days, I'm playing it on an SD card or a compact flash card yeah. built into yeah. my, my A1200. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember it being... The the days are gone, they're having to swap between floppies. Oh, especially the games like Monkey Island and what? No, it came on 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what WHD, uh, WHD loads for. Yeah. Oh, perfect. And any game that... Before WHD load, if, you, if a game and you were lucky enough to have a hard disk in your Amiga, um, and you know a game had a, the option to install a hard disk, it was brilliant. It was like, um, mm. but they were the future. Few, they were few and far between, though, weren't they? Hard disk installable games. There weren't many of them. I think it came from the desert. Was one of them, to be honest. Um, but oh, was it? I never knew that. I think so. 